Hello everyone. Hope everyone is doing well. So we are continuing uh, with the series of public administration where uh, we will be covering those sketchy areas where aspirants have uh, less clarity. But uh, yes, like said before, UPSC has been asking questions in those areas. So it's better to cover all these areas so that you can maximize your marks in the examination and uh, attempt uh, the uh, all the questions, all the questions in the sense, those easier questions as well and don't fall for the trap set by the UPS. Okay, uh, so in the last session, we had uh, discussed Peter Drucker. So Peter Drucker was discussed very holistically and hopefully it will be enough for you to answer any question which uh, comes on Peter Drucker in public administration. So today we'll, we are going to discuss uh, Karl Marx, Karl Marx. Karl Marx, okay. Uh, see, Karl Marx, uh, very, uh, see, Karl Marx in the past, uh, past public administration paper also, it had come once, I am um, once in the past paper, uh, it was of 10 marks. And, uh, and the question was in the compulsory question, that is, you had to attempt, it was in the question one, uh, almost, I guess, 1D it was. So, yeah, where are you let's keep now? You have to attempt this. And to attempt this, you should know how what are what what was his views. So if you don't know Karl Marx, then 10 marks is gone. Mm -hmm. And then you will be attempting to 40 marks only in the UPSC. So there it's five, six marks or seven marks according to whatever the UPSC adopts the marking pattern, that will be a loss in your total. Okay, so to maximize your marks, cover all these areas as well. Okay. So today we'll uh, discuss uh, Karl Marx. <coughs> so Karl Marx. Marx. Okay. Uh, so we will structure the entire lecture in such a way that firstly we'll discuss about his brief background. Background. His life and works. That is life and works. Then he will discuss about uh, his views on bureaucracy. This is what he talks. What he talks about bureaucracy. Okay, so first he talks about origin of bureaucracy from where this instrument of bureaucracy came out. Is origin of bureaucracy. Firstly, second he he attacks the bureaucracy. That is criticizing bureaucracy. So attack is in the two, uh, two terms. First is his functioning and the inherent characteristics which are attacked. Okay. And thirdly, he gives the theory of alienation. Theory of alienation. Then uh, fourthly, we will discuss some differences. We will discuss in brief the differences between Karl Marx and Weber. Weber on their views on bureaucracy. Okay, so differences we will discuss. And lastly, I will give you one question. You send it to me. I will evaluate and uh, send you back. Okay. The question, uh, your answer should be in PDF format. Okay, don't uh, send it on an image format. Send on my number or telegram, uh, whichever suits you. Okay, so this way we'll structure the entire session. So firstly, we'll brief background, then the, his views on bureaucracy that he talks about the how the uh, instrument of bureaucracy originated. Next, will he attacks the bureaucracy in, in terms of structure, uh, in terms of functioning and the characteristics of bureaucracy. Thirdly, he gives his uh, theory of alienation. Then we'll talk about the differences between differences between Karl Marx and Weber uh, on bureaucracy. And uh, lastly, I'll give you one question. Okay. So let's begin. Uh, see Karl Marx, the brief background of his. Mm 
मार्क्स ओके सी कार्ल मार्क्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सोशल सोशल थिंकर सोशियोलॉजिस्ट एवरी वन नोज इंपॉर्टेंट सोशियोलॉजिस्ट सोशियोलॉजिस्ट एंड इंपॉर्टेंट नो नो फील्ड ऑफ सोशल साइंस इज कंप्लीट विद विदाउट द डिस्कशन ऑफ कार्ल मार्क्स ओके ही इज द फाउंडर ऑफ मॉडर्न कम्युनिज्म founder of modern communism he is also his views also led to the establishment of many regimes based on his views that is marxist philosophies marxist philosophy many states were established be it ussr or you take cuba also all these regimes were established on based on his philosophies okay and uh, he is a uh, and no discussion of no discussion of politics administration and uh, politics administration the state is complete without discussion without the views of karl marx okay there lies its importance so so a brief background of his uh, so he was brown in, born in persia Russia, Russia that is in Germany, and he was a revolutionary student since the beginning. So later he moved to Paris, and Paris was considered as a hub of revolutionaries. He moved there, hub of revolutionaries, and uh, he was thrown out of Paris also because his views led to led to what? Led to an armed rebellion. in paris <laughs> revolutionary also incited rebellion also so he was thrown out of the thrown out of paris then he went to london and he stayed there till his death okay this is briefly what our what he has done and now his important works so let's talk about his important works the works of karl marx First is the Holy Family. Holy Family. Then uh, the the poverty of philosophy. The poverty of philosophy. Thirdly. the communist manifesto yes very famous communist manifesto festo <coughs> and then uh, one of his important work was the critic the the contribution sorry the contribution to the critic of political economy so these are all his important works uh, works he published he published many works these are some of the important works remember these only no need to remember everything the holy family the poverty of philosophy yes it is the poverty of philosophy and not philosophy of poverty the poverty of philosophy the communist manifesto very <laughs> very well known work of his and the contribution to the critique of political economy okay so this was his brief background and uh, his works okay so let's uh, let's start with the his views on bureaucracy first uh, origin of bureaucracy how what very traces the origin of the bureaucracy origin of bureaucracy okay uh, so there are he he links the four developments which are, leads to origin of bureaucracy in those particular phases first is uh, religion i'll explain each in detail so less for jot down second is the state it's state okay one you know state trade and commerce and fourth technology 
okay uh, so these are the four uh, areas which led to the development of origin of bureaucracy the state the religion state and <coughs> technology first uh, let's talk about religion see a religion <coughs> so what he says that uh, to, to uh, every religious institution there was a religious institutions okay every religion has some religious institution so they needed people to perform rituals rituals every religion has some rituals hinduism everything everything has some rituals and these rituals uh, were performed by a, a special class a class which he considered as bureaucracy okay this ritual also to protect the religious institution also you need to someone to protect religious institution the religious properties so this class was responsible for this and this class what he termed as bureaucracy so this is one aspect of origin of bureaucracy next he talks about the state so now uh, so religion is clear how religion uh, etc led to the birth of bureaucracy a religion has a rituals and rituals are performed by one class this class he called as bureaucracy a religion also has their own property religion institution properties of religion you also need to maintain law and order within the religious institutions some people are dev- deployed so these people are nothing but bureaucrats okay come to state now let's come to state see uh, see when the primitive society led to the after the primitive society state developed we know that contract the hobs etc see uh, then state developed then state according to him is an exploitative instrument exploit exploitation of people and the state will use bureaucracy as a tool to exploit people okay so also the state needed people to manage the conflict between the people also the state needed people to manage its conflict conflict happens in police administration what police administration does it manages the conflict of the people police manages the conflict of the people that is state's role so state needed all these people also to protect the wealth of the capitalist the state is needed to protect the wealth of the capitalist so this state all is everything was needed by the state so who will do all this so this bureaucracy will do it okay bureaucracy will do all this so it's as an instrument to instrument to perpetuate the state's exploitation on the people so basically karl marx used state as a instrument of uh, as a instrument of a particular class a class will continuously rule and become a state and that class will use bureaucracy as an instrument to perpetuate its goals that is exploitation of the people and to maintain status quo and to continue the privileges okay so this privileges are maintained etc so this is what uh, is led to the birth of bureaucracy in the modern modern world origin okay so state is clear so this is about how state and bureaucracy are interlinked and how the state led to the origin of bureaucracy okay this two we have discussed religion and state now let's go to trade and commerce so another aspect of development another reason for the growth of the instrument of uh, bureaucracy is trade and commerce so now how trade and commerce see whenever trade happens at the big level at the massive level you need some managers okay to manage everything to keep accounts accounts to keep accounts to collect revenue revenue you need people for all this trade and commerce capitalism then you need manage accounts collect revenue manage the wealth etc so who will manage bureaucracy will manage so this also led to the origin of bureaucracy now see connect with indian administration also east india company East India Company. What East India Company came as traders, trade. 
they also had bureaucrats before the charter act they had bureaucrats who were employed and the bureaucrats were highly corrupt under east india company and after the charter act of i guess 1813 please check i am not sure 1813 or which the queen took over so <coughs> so they become the bureaucrats working here became the uh, they work uh, under the queen so that is the state this is what it is so this bureaucracy trade also gives and yes we know then after east india company then british raj came in india and the bureaucracy bureaucracy the british bureaucracy was an instrument of exploitation of the indian people the indian people it and draw again british bureaucracy See, then became the instrument of exploitation of Indian people, Indian people, and they who from whom they are working the state, that is the British government. See, instrument of exploitation. <clears throat> It works as an instrument of exploitation. The British government, that is, makes a revenue collect, and also it was in it was said that uh, it is the a british bureaucracy on the back of which the elephantine elephantine size of british at british administration rest or the district collector it is so the elephantine size of british administration rest on this back of this district collector that is the bureaucracy see in, in be it in uh, be it in the mughal india also mughal india What what it was bureaucracy was a uh, mansabdari that was called so it was basically an instrument for exploitation. Yes, uh, many thinkers talk about how Mughal in the Mughal India the bureaucracy was only for revenue collection and little welfare activities was not there was not done. Only revenue was collected, taxes was committed by the mansabdars, and people were left to fend for themselves. So this is how trade and commerce etc. led to the birth of bureaucracy okay so third or fourth aspect he talks about karl marx talks about that uh, <coughs> that technology technology also lead to bureaucracy now how technology lead to bureaucracy birth of bureaucracy see whenever uh, technology means what initially in the in post industrial revolution it meant machine use of machine people people were replaced were machines we you needed people to to you needed people to operate this machine or design this machine or to you need also some assistant uh, to make this machines work so designers example who man who designed the machines with their intellectual ability and innovation are who they are nothing but technocracy technocracy is another form of bureaucracy technocracy this this also will led a birth of this technocracy okay this is also another reason for the origin of bureaucracy that technocrats technocrats are also working for government then it becomes a bureaucracy only so technocracy they are so see you can relate with today's world or today's developed today's uh, today also see fourth industrial revolution is coming has come also you know, artificial intelligence who has the skills technocrats has the skills techno technocrats people will have the skill ai etc industry 4.0 art internet of things etc now government of india want to implement all this then they will hire them to become part of the government technocracy how will they hire lateral entry yes very hot topic lateral entry they will hire then this is again also will but to generalist versus specialist debate so this is technology technocracy and this and this will also act as a instrument of exploitation of the state because see techno technologies technocracy are what they are capitalist capitalist so they will implement capitalism and exploitation of the people the benefit should be more than cost no welfare activities no need profit and loss 
this is how states as an instrument of exploitation even technocracy okay so technological development and etc will happen okay so, so this is how uh, karl marx talks about uh, the origins of the bureaucracy we have discussed its uh, religion first religion then state trade and commerce and technology okay yes yeah, so okay then uh, we we'll move further <coughs> So next he talks about what? Next is he criticizes bureaucracy. That is he starts attack, attack, attacking the bureaucracy. First we'll understand briefly the relationship between the state and the bureaucracy. Okay, so state we all know. State. <coughs> state acts and acts is dominated by a particular class a class will continuously rule the state then the class the state will use bureaucracy as an instrument for to achieving its goals and what are the goals of the state according to karl marx they want to exploit exploit the people that is the workers and other goal is maintain status quo that is it continues to maintain their privileges are maintained so privileges are maintained that is what is the state and state will use bureaucracy as an instrument for this and the relationship between the state and the bureaucracy bureaucracy is of how how is the relationship he says bureaucracy is a closed system of the state closed system of the state you understand closed system right in the state closed system open system modern organization theory okay see this is state this is bureaucracy okay so this is state so it is a closed system and these are the people the state instrument and this so closed system is doesn't in in open system there is two way interaction but this is a closed system so no two way interaction so bureaucracy will control this people exploit this people to maintain the privileges of the ruling class and also bureaucracy also benefits from this we'll discuss later okay so this is what is the relationship between the state and the bureaucracy okay and he also further says this state is temporary and which will eventually wither away by the proletariat revolution proletariat proletariat revolution that is workers revolution okay and it will eventually as people will smash the state and state will wither away we'll discuss later in detail so this is basically how he views the state and bureaucracy okay so is a closed system closed system is important okay closed system so now uh, so relationship is discussed between now he starts attacking the bureaucracy first he says he attacks the uh, three ways the functioning of the bureaucracy this about this function say first he calls bureaucracy bureaucracy as parasites parasites okay and then the, he he says it's mysterious mysterious nature mysterious nature or okay or secrecy secrecy it's works in secrecy there are parasites and bureaucracy works for its private ends private ends okay see this is how we attacks i'll discuss each in detail don't worry there are parasites bureaucracy is parasites they work it is mysterious these are mysterious in nature works in secrecy and works for private ends okay. now he says the role of bureaucracy is nothing but of a parasite is a parasitic parasites so you know now what are parasites are parasites will feed up on someone so what he says bureaucracy feeds on the people 
people's state kills on the people exploits them use as an instrument exploits and suppresses them suppresses their creativity its act of domination domination over the people so as a parasite it keeps sucking the people and sucking the people for whom for the state so that the status quo is maintained that is the ruling class is able to rule ruling class rules only okay status quo is maintained and the ruling class keeps ruling and the privileges are maintained so this is the parasites he talks about bureaucracy is a parasite okay in its function see in functioning also you see any bureaucracy works as an instrument of the state only be it be it the committed bureaucracy committed bureaucracy in the during the emergency area emergency era so many liberties were in india committed bureaucracy during the emergency era they worked as a parasite so liberties of the people were killed and it is famously said that during the bureaucracy you you were asked to bend bureaucrats were asked to but they started to crawl parasites so in today also the functioning of ed cbi you can see ed cbi ed cbi is all all parasitic rules even the supreme court recently said don't act like a cage parrot Cage parrot. Recently, uh, in the Arvind Kejriwal case, where he was granted bail, there they said, "Don't act like a cage parrot. Parasites. <laughs> so should have called parasites only. Maybe Karl Marx would have been happy in heavens. Okay. So this is what it is. Uh, parasitic role. Okay. So here, this parasites. Why they were called parasites? Because they keep sucking the host. Host are the people. exploitation of the people so karl marx called them as parasites okay now a second he talks about uh, where is this no ah uh, second uh, he talks about bureaucracy works for private ends works for private ends that is Private ends means what? Their own benefit. They work for their own benefit. Now, how they work for a ben benefit? See, state bureaucracy, people. Okay, state that is the capitalist people, etc. The ruling class will use the bureaucracy for exploitation of people. exploitation of people keep suppressing them maximizing profit increase productivity so this way their state will benefit and state will share some of its profits profits with the bureaucracy so bureaucracy works for this also as a private ends to increase the profit as shares and also how it uh, benefits them see bureaucracy again Uh, bureaucracy is career oriented and hierarchical. This is the hierarchy. They have to climb. Career oriented and hierarchical. So, bureaucracy which are efficiently working for the state in this way, they will get promotions. They will become the favorites of the state. They will, they will, they will hold the top positions of the state under the state. So, yes. <laughs> committed bureaucracy during emergency area every even today also uh, government of india some bureaucrats have been been those position for very long so they are benefiting that like uh, see the cabinet secretary or principal secretary for many years they were in that position since 2014 some are there but the tenure is 2 years only they are 10 10 years so This is how the bureaucracy also benefits. They work for private ends. That is, you you make the state happy, the state will make you happy by promotion, etc. <laughs> If you don't make the state happy, you will be thrown out from the organization. ARC two, we one can recall, talks about honest officers are punished with uh, punishment posting and frequent transfers, 
and corrupt officers are rewarded with prime posting. So this is how the state works for the private actors. Okay, and third is, uh, third we talked, he talks about the mysterious nature, mysterious nature, nature of bureaucracy. So, see, uh, bureaucracy, yes, we know it's known for secrecy. So, it is an information holder. It works in a mysterious way. It doesn't interact with the people. No interaction with the people. See, uh, Karl Marx also first talks about it's a closed system. Closed system, no interaction with the people. So, they work in secrecy. So, they, according to Karl Marx, if uh, secrecy is not there, People's conscience will be raised. People's conscience will rise. People's conscience will rise. Okay. When people's conscience rise, what will happen? First, uh, they will get information. This all wrong is happening. Then people's conscience will rise. And what will happen? They will keep attacking the state's bureaucracy. That is the state. Because there is a closed system between state and the bureaucracy. So they will attack the state. If attack the state, then what happens? The status quo is not maintained and privileges won't be maintained. So the ruling class will fall. So that's why keep everything secret. Don't give anything. Okay. Be it Manipur also. In India, Manipur incident happened. How it came out? When that video, that dreaded video came out, then everyone came to know how situation is bad in the in the state of Manipur. Previously, everything was kept secret, very sadly in our country. What to say? So, mysterious nature we could be offered. See, uh, before RTI also, before RTI also, this was very mysterious nature. No one knew what happened in the bureaucracy. It released information before RTI on its own, uh, whatever they want to give, they'll give. But RTI came, then secrecy vanished to a certain extent. But there are also many provisions which are misused in RTI that your information you asked is too voluminous, cannot be given. Dump every information, find the relevant information. So this way, how this tries to maintain secrecy even today. Also, many amendments are brought into RTI which promotes the secrecy, such as the DPDP Act, DPDP Act of 2023, subverts RTI. Okay, so this way. It uh, it tries to keep secrecy. See, paper 2, RTI, paper 1. Hey, paper 1, it comes usually. So, paper 1, you connect all this. Okay, So, it will become uh, paper 1 oriented answer, not GS2 or public administration paper 2 answer. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, paper 2 also, you need to connect thinkers. Otherwise, it will be just GS2 answers. Or you will end up <laughs> writing GS4 ethics answers. But public is public administration, not it is optional, not GS. Okay, so this is how it uh, he talks about the mysterious nature of uh, the working of the bureaucracy. These were the criticisms according to him based on the working, okay, functionality of bureaucracy that is mysterious nature. Then the uh, what is private ends bureaucracy works for private ends <laughs> and bureaucrats are parasites. Are really bureaucrats parasites even in today? Yes, I think to a certain extent, many people consider bureaucrats in India as a nightmare, total nightmare dealing with bureaucrats. Do you also go to any bureaucratic institution? You will also come to know what bureaucracy is without any, without any social connect. Go like a normal citizen, especially a poor person. See, you will come to know what bureaucracy is. Okay, see this, how, how he criticizes the, <coughs> the functioning of bureaucracy. Okay. So, and then he attacks the characteristics of bureaucracy. Okay. So, characteristics. Characteristics. Now, what are the characteristics he attacks? First, uh, he attacks the recruitment. Recruitment, second recruitment, then division of labor, then 
and then he attacks the hierarchy. Lastly, he attacks the rules. See, these are the prominent features of bureaucracy labor. This is what bureaucracy is based on. So he attacks each and every of this. Okay. <coughs> Characteristics, yes, Weberian characters, division of labor, hierarchy, rules, recruitment based on merit and technical competence, merit based recruitment. So, how we attacks, let's uh, take one by one. First, the recruitment. Now, how recruitment happens in the Weberian bureaucracy based on merit? Competitive exam like how you, you guys are giving civil service examination, you you perform well in the exam, intellectual exam, you will be a bureaucrat. Okay, intellectual is testing your intellectual. He attacks this examination is useless. He says, uh, firstly, he says <coughs> this, uh, see the work of a bureaucracy is of a statesman. Okay. Statesman, you understand statesman? Statesman, that is a person who have to deal with variety of people, have to have good people connect, people's dealing with people, solving, solving people's problem. That is what bureaucracy does and it's a work of a statesman. Can bureaucracy, then people, can, only whose intelligence is tested from this examination can be a statesman? No, he says no, not at all and it's true also to a certain extent. Highly intellectual people, how they deal with people? If there was a bureaucracy, is uh, Indian bureaucracy based on merit, UPSC selects. So if there are so much intellectual and everything is good, then why bureaucracy in India is rated as a bureaucratic nightmare? So much corruption happens. See, uh, this all he talks about. This is it's not po it, this statesmanship is not possible by using this intellectual exam. Okay. So he therefore he criticizes the recruitment. Next he further says, see to clear this examination you need to have need to be properly educated, access to quality of education. So he says the workers don't have access to this. Workers don't have access to this quality education to clear this examination to clear civil services. So it again promotes class domination only. Class domain. One class who has access to education, quality education, they only will clear this examination. It promotes class domination. But uh, see, even if you clear this examination, not necessary, you become a good administrator because you need statesmanship. So he, he says also education is not accessible to everyone. Does the poor in a country, especially below poverty line, or be any people who are not well off, not in the middle class? Do, do you think they have not even middle class people don't have access to quality education? So how do you clear this examination? Yes, in India there is reservation. Reservation to uh, for uh, to promote uh, social justice in uh, civil services. But see, <laughs> okay, but see the class domination is happening here also. See, UPSC reports is, itself says that. Engineers, engineers are the highest uh, highest number percentage of people who are clearing this examination. So engineers, you already have access to quality education, so you are clearing. The poor people, poor work of social science background, they are less in number, so they are not able to clear this examination. So it's it's a class domination in Indian civil services also that the UPSC, CSC. So it's a class domination of engineers who are clearing this examination. So there is a class domination. Also, uh, high quality examination, the high quality education, IITs, IIMs, highest uh, highest selection rate. Selection rate, right? Like uh, their chances of selection are the highest. Okay. And further, he says, <coughs> these people who are educated, etc., will <coughs> eventually promote will capitalist capitalism. Capitalism. Okay. And which is not a statementship. And capitalism is what? Exploitative tool by the people who have resources of the poor people. This people eventually promote this only. Exploitation of the people. See, 
<coughs> IIMs, etc. Also, people clear this exam and the success rate is high. In IIMs, what is taught? Business is taught, right? Marketing, finance, etc. How to grow business, how it should be benefits should be more than cost. After exam, they will come to government of India. They will use the uh, apply this philosophy, cost cutting, etc. <laughs> government maximum governance, then exploitation of the poor. So this is how this happens even today. See. Highly, so they don't have statemanship, the educated people. See, the recent case of IS Maharashtra, uh, entire country knows that she was also a doctor, highly educated, cleared exam, <laughs> cleared or not, did clear through unfair means. Then what? What she was doing? She was also not a statesman at all. Then, also. And imagine if she would have, all this wouldn't have came out, then what kind of exploitation would have happened of the people in our hands, okay? So this is how he talks about how recruitment is totally flawed, it's not uh, proper in bureaucracy, the how very bureaucracy promotes merit and technical competence. It's totally not worth because it's statementship is required for success of bureaucracy which this merit-based recruitment cannot bring it, okay? So next, uh, next characteristic he attacks is division of labor. So division of labor, okay? So what is division of labor? See, division of labor, you all know Taylor, you have remember Taylor scientific management, functional formmanship. What is that? Division of labor. Divide the labor according to the intellectual skills and the mechanistic skills. Productivity. Productivity. Functional formmanship is also also the classical principles also talks about what? It talks about division also. Gullik and Urvik. So, Fayol also yeah, implicitly talks about this division of labor, unity of command, unity of direction, specialization, etc. Okay. So, division of labor. So, what division? Technical people, intellectual people. In the fact that they are intellectual people and there are workers. And what is the, what, what this division of labor does? This intellectual people will control and supervise very strict control will be there on the workers and the workers here also will be exploited control supervision they won't have any creativity no innovation there will be continuous supervision like see taylor also <laughs> under taylorism continuous supervision was there and this is what he talks about what he it does okay division of labor same thing in happens in bureaucracy division of labor in india also see all india services then there is state services, then how would they further division group A, group B, group C, and group D. Okay, so this is division of labor. And all the hard work is done by the, this group C and D, the street level bureaucrats. So group C, group A, B, group B and D, this is the division of labor in Indian bureaucracy. All hard work is done by this street level bureaucracy, execution of policies at ground level. And who? And this is under the close supervision of Group A. They are exploited. This is all the, I mean, their pay is high for these people who are doing intellectual activities. Not for these people who are actually creating whatever law and under maintenance, etc. Who is the, who is the, the constabulary is the main instrument. Without the constabulary, they cannot maintain law and order. They are the people on the ground. And IPS, etc. are in their offices planning and directing. Okay, and he says this leads to exploitation. He gives the analogy in terms of capitalism, a manager and workers. This is for your understanding. I am giving all this. Okay, so this is how division of labor is promotes exploitation of the worker, and he criticizes it. Okay, so next is next he criticizes hierarchy. Hope you know hierarchy. Hierarchy that a boss, supervisor, subordinate, that hierarchy, tall hierarchy, triangular hierarchy is top level people are few, bottom level people are more, fat organization like Peter Drucker will say. 
hierarchy so <coughs> top level or organization so what is the benefit of hierarchy it will maintain responsibility and accountability but what he says this hierarchy is a hierarchy of knowledge and it is nothing it, it does not provide accountability and responsibility because see you are trapped in this hierarchy okay as a bureaucrat suppose you are here okay and you see some malpractices where will you report your report higher ups or you will go and tell your lower people this is happening but if all these are part of that collusive corruption what you are going to do if you go outside that hierarchy you will be removed and you will be part become a worker itself not an instrument of the state anymore <laughs> here also you will be exploited your hands and legs are tied here so and everyone is uh, corrupt according to him and everyone uh, corrupt in the sense it says is an keep our main aim is for exploitation so this hierarchy is also useless it doesn't do anything and, and also it uh, diffuse responsibility because the lower level people will bring the higher level people for anything wrong the higher level people will bring will blame the lower people for the law so he also decides hierarchy and he uh, rejects this hierarchy also and terms it another instrument another uh, which an, one of the characteristics which acts as a instrument for exploitation of the, by the state okay so let's come next uh, next he criticizes this rules that is characteristic he attacks the rules See, we all know weberian bureaucracy legal rational authority is based on rules you follow rules and you will be the most efficient person rule based legal rational and most rational and yes the same criticism only what is the rules becomes an end in itself and <clears throat> and uh, rules become important than human he says rules becomes important than human beings okay this is how he criticizes them now see many examples are there where rules are important than human see we all know that aadhar authentication fails no pds no no food grains aadhar no food grains also recently an uh, news had come in odisha this uh, when some samadra sambhadra yojana is there of the state government where uh, the beneficiary the, uh, should share the otp to get the get money from under this yojana no this state government yojana is there but what happen now that tribal people for to get otp first you should have a mobile so one tribal tribal people is yes, uh, still in india india development has not reached every parts of the country so travel did not had a mobile so what he had to do he mortgaged his wife jewelry to get this mobile to get otp and get get the benefits and other things see he one problem he create more problem so how this is the rules become important than humans there can be other way of authentication also that other way you should exploit it but rule says there should be otp for <coughs> for uh, giving benefits okay so this way he criticizes the rules the prominent characteristics of the weberian bureaucracy that is how he attacks the bureaucracy okay so this is all is clear see how it criticizes first he criticizes the division of labor division of labor uh, division of labor recruitment division of labor recruitment division of labor recruitment then he then he criticizes uh, the hierarchy and the fourth is the rules okay in this how we reject the characteristics and these characteristics acts is a main instrument are the main core aspects which acts as a tool for exploitation okay so this way he attacks them now uh, next uh, so next we will uh, discuss how his theory of elimination okay 
Theory of alienation. Now, see, uh, see, before the industrial revolution or before these factory settings of manufacturing goods, see, you also observed in India also now it also its present. See, blacksmith, etc., or the cobblers, or artisans, art, many artisans before the industrial revolution, what they used to do? They will use uh, set up their own shops work according to their own time, manufacture goods, create some goods and then the entire good they had manufactured whole, wholly, okay? And they will also have interaction with the people also, their customers. So there is a sense of ownership also and there is some interaction also with the people. But what he says now, this was previously, now when capitalism came, this all got vanished, okay? Factories, Factories, factories were established. Capitalism, mass production happened under capitalism. Mass production. Mass production under capitalism. So what happens? So those people who are doing their own shops, they become part of the this mass production as workers. Okay. So they become workers, huge armies. Huge armies of workers who set up in factories. These armies of workers were working in the factories. Yes, go to any factory, you say, a lot of workers working. Now, this all result in the alienation of the people. Alienation of the workers from whom? From the people also and from the products also. Okay, so see, workers, lot of workers and Workers will be supervised by some managers. The bureaucrats will supervise them. Micro supervision, what they are doing, what they are not doing. See, in scientific management also, how Taylor used stopwatch, etc. Time and motion study to supervise workers. Each movement of the workers were supervised. So there is no level, no freedom at all for them. They are closely supervised. Okay. So this is clear how they got alienated from everything. From the products also they got alienated on the, from the people also. No interaction with anyone. They got alienated. They got alienated. Okay. Now, this alienation res, uh, results in what? Alienation results in loss of freedom. Alienation results in loss of Creativity. Elimination result in loss of humanity. And elimination results in loss of morality. Okay, uh, loss of freedom, see. Yes, we discuss how they are because of close supervision, etc. They have no freedom at all. They cannot do anything. They have to follow those rules which have been set up by their managers, that is bureaucrats. It is follow rules, close supervision, results in loss of freedom. This is loss of freedom, okay. And what happens in loss of freedom? Loss of freedom is also lost and this result in loss of creativity. See, creativity when come when there is freedom, okay. Now what happens because of specialization? There is specialization. See, specialization as there is division of labor. So division of labor, then the task has been divided. Task has been divided, okay, due to division of labor. So how task is divided? See, no, no one person will be, will be manufacturing the entire product. Task is divided. Suppose uh, a computer is to be manufactured. Suppose the hardware, okay. Someone will manufacture the keyboard, someone will manufacture the LCD screen, someone will, someone will install the software. So, see, this task is divided and results in what? 
there is no ownership at all. Do you have any ownership that I have created, created this product wholly? You haven't. You have just created some parts of it. So there is no sense of ownership and no satisfaction will come. You will not satisfy. See, consumer will buy this product and say, a very good product. Will the credit go to this uh, worker who, the, the bunch of workers who have created this? No, it will go to the company. The capitalist people will take the credit for it. See, I will give some example of uh, correlation with the government schemes also. Suppose government scheme will Okay, so, so okay, we will discuss UPI. UPI, Universal Payment Interface, Unified Payment Interface, is very successful. Now, who, who now who all created this? Many many people have must have created small small uh, small many uh, subordinate level, subordinate bureaucrats to have uh, contributed, uh, technocrats, some uh, small uh, Indian engineering service people also. Everyone must have contributed for this creation. But when civil services award happened, the they, the secretary of that uh, that ministry was given the award. What about their contribution? And success of UPI is taken by who? By taking by government of India. Isn't it? Government of India will take the success of this. Okay. And similarly, see, Swaj Bharat Abhiyan happens. Swaj Bharat Abhiyan. Okay. <clears throat> now, Swaj Bharat Abhiyan, we are uh, open defecation free now. So, who is taking credit for this? Government of India is taking Swaj Bharat, uh, Swaj Bharat, Swaj Bharat, Ka Sapna, etc. Then government of India is taking. What about those, uh, those sweepers, etc. Or the, those village level workers, BDOs, etc. Who went to the villages, went to each house to convince people to build toilet, uh, bring out attitudinal change. Are they been credited? Their contribution is very substantial. Without, they are who worked for the people. But it is taken by the government of India or, or any particular district collector is taken for credit for that particular district. What about these people? These are the people who should be credited with. So they are not even getting a sense of satisfaction in their success. So less satisfaction, less freedom, less creativity. Also what happens is that uh, this also leads to uh, capitalist economy, uh, leads to higher productivity due to mechanization, etc. Now, see, UPI happened. Now, productivity increase in financial transaction. Now, productivity, okay, some people, but some will be at loss also. Some workers will become unemployed. Even in Swaj Bharat, suppose Swaj Bharat, uh, all objectives are met. Then some contract-based sweepers, cleaners who are there, they are of no use now. They will be removed from the organization. This will also create unemployment. Okay, so whatever workers are doing for the benefit of the capitalists or the state, it, it's it's they they themselves are being removed. Huh? They, they are not even shared the benefits. Benefits are given to the these bureaucrats. Okay, so this way it happens. Uh, okay, so this results in loss of freedom, loss of creativity, and how it also leads to loss of humanity also. Uh, yes, I was going to tell you, see, this this happens, see, this how unemployment increases, okay. Now, you remember Taylor also? Taylor implemented his techniques in one of the factories in Bethlehem, where there were 500 plus workers, and without with using this no supervision, etc., stopwatch, he bound it down to 160. See, this unemployment. So this becomes uh, unemployment, and, and ultimately what happened? Just a moment, this got stuck, I guess. So, it uh, results in loss of creativity, okay, loss of creativity. Okay, so how it, uh, it further then results in loss of humanity also, how it results in loss of humanity, okay. Uh, so, it results in loss of humanity. Uh, see, uh, here, now how these workers have been treated? Workers have been treated. Like close supervision, total year they have to no no freedom, no creativity. So they are just nothing but a mere cogs in the giant machinery. 
giant machinery they are nothing but a mere cogs like what taylor also says that what is that is a tail criticism of taylor also just a mere cogs and with no emotions nothing no interaction as the bureaucracy is a closed close system it won't it, there won't be a two way interaction only direction direction etc so workers will be not into near animal with no emotions at all they are converted into near animals and this is also what humans you treating as animals as converting them into animals is what is a loss of morality this is a loss of morality okay human values are human values are totally degraded here and humans have been converted into animals with no freedom nothing no supervision so it is a loss of morality also morality okay this is also a loss of morality and he further says that this also affects the bureaucrats themselves okay not just the workers they are also been they are also they are also have happen to be this only they don't they also don't have a social life in indian bureaucracy hardly bureaucrats have social life 24/7 they are working supervising the people police administration especially no social life okay so this is how they are also converted to near animals loss of morality loss of creativity and loss of freedom this results now what happens now what further happens after this this is what is really theory of evolution theory of alienation okay so see if he further says this will lead to what eventually withering away of the state withering away of the state now what how it will be there away now see this all is happening exploitation is happening then he says there is a will be proletariat period revolution proletariat revolution that is workers revolution workers revolution will happen and what he says whom the workers will attack people that is workers okay he says the people will attack the state they will not attack the bureaucracy because the decimation of the state will ensure the decimation of the bureaucracy higher the alienation he says the higher the amount of violence will be there okay higher the alienation higher the violence the people will be attack the state that he says the people will smash the state smash state that is a revolution will occur he says now see in a uh, in various parts of the world also this happened they smashed the state and the state the higher the alienation the more violence was required see in india also emergency then emergency happened then what happened and committed bureaucracy bureaucracy committed and people smashed the state how they smashed the jp movement came into being then then state indira gandhi the lost elections they smashed it smashed the state so lost election change in the government is good thing that uh, whatever changes happening in india are happened through democratic process abid the 20 13 14 anna hazare movement india against corruption alienation increase perceived alienation then people smashed it and the new government came into being okay democratic means so not necessarily it will be always a democratic they can smash in the state can be violent also he says the higher of higher alienation higher the violence required see arab spring smashed it smashed it it many uh, dictators were uh, were uh, doctors fell down like gaddafi okay gaddafi etc that time now also recent our neighbor bangladesh alienation happened of people to bureaucracy they didn't attack the bureaucracy they attacked here the state and the coup happened protest happened who happened and she had to fled 
then people here smash the state bureaucracy and also lot of violence also happen higher alienation higher violence this way the people smash the state okay now uh, what will happen to bureaucracy now now what will happen to bureaucracy state is gone now he says for the time being bureaucracy will eventually go but for the time being the people will use this bureaucracy and on based on wages to do certain functions that the state will have some limited functions for the time being so they will use bureaucracy and he also says there will be centralization also doesn't doesn't reject centralization okay there will be centralization so this is how it he talks about revolution proletariat revolution that is the workers revolution bureaucracy okay so there will be centralization and what will be the eventually eventually the bureaucracy will be gone what he says in uh, as discussed previously it's the work of a statesman what is uh, bureaucrats are doing the work of a statesman so workers that is the people will elect elect wait elect workers people will elect people among themselves to rule that is that that revolution is happening happened but bureaucrats will be elected not career based <coughs> among themselves and who will supervise them people will supervise them and how people will supervise them they will they will be removed bureaucrats appointed by the people will be removed it found unsatisfactory so understood what uh, so like how elections happen the elections will happen for bureaucracy also bureaucracy will be elected by the people <coughs> bureaucracy will be elected by the people and they will work for the people and people will supervise and if found unsatisfactory they will be removed like how politicians are removed but they are removed five years he doesn't talk any time frame but whenever found unsatisfactory they will be removed so this way bureaucracy will work for the people and they will work for the public service and not they will work for the people work for the public service <coughs> and not for the particular class and not to maintain status quo and not to protect privileges they won't work for all this they will work for the people for public service because they will be accountable to the people and people will remove them so this is how eventually the entire bureaucracy will go entire bureaucracy barbarian bureaucracy will wither away wither away so wither away so it is a death blow death blow to bureaucracy bureaucracy that is barbarian bureaucracy how it's a death blow barbarian bureaucracy is based on career based where is career now it's all upon your performance you fail public service you won't be there bureaucracy was based on merit and technical competence through examination no examination will be elected <clears throat> so no merit based also it career based 60 years retirement but not necessarily or you will be removed any time found unsatisfactory with respect to public service and satisfactory removed okay so this is what it is uh, how he bureaucracy will be there away see this is what is largely karl marx talks about uh, how the origin of bureaucracy how he criticizes everything uh, bureaucracy the structure and the functioning and how eventually bureaucracy will be there away and they will be ruled by the proletariat that is the workers 
and how the under work is how the system will function okay so this is what it is uh, now we'll discuss some brief differences between Karl Marx and Weber on bureaucracy briefly will discuss largely you will ha you have all the fodder but still I'll discuss briefly so let's take here uh, Weber and Marx this difference is it is a respect with respect to bureaucracy okay so Weber conceptualize bureaucracy conceptualize the conceptual lines the entire bureaucracy it is he said how bureaucracy should be based legal national authority merit technical competence neutrality <coughs> how career based etc based on values he doesn't he 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 here only criticizes he doesn't give any concept criticizes also he considers bureaucracy as an instrument of the state for exploitation he doesn't give any conceptualization get doesn't give any model okay this is one difference second he has a positive connotation he has a negative connotation positive connotation how he talks about merit etc that features will result in highest productivity efficiency highest form of efficiency and in terms of speed etc it will be the highest efficient organization in the world that is the ideal bureaucracy he views as a positive connotation okay and here he views as a, as a negative connotation that is a extra yes i discuss here already instrument of exploitation or bureaucracy leads to loss of creativity freedom etc okay so these are two differences then then what yes uh, this is uh, third he talks about recruitment based on merit technical competence here he criticizes that also that it is a work of a statesman right so they should be elected those who any among the workers only okay merit and technical competence so next what is the difference so difference next is mm, uh, merit okay statesman etc yes he say he even weber himself says that once bureaucracy is established it becomes institutionalized that is difficult to difficult to remove bureaucracy once it gets established cannot be removed see in, in india also bureaucracy reforms reforms they are shouting where every forms bureaucracy still is the dominant aspects in the administration today in the, in the system of government it becomes become institutionalized it becomes very difficult to remove and here karl marx said yes it will eventually smashed by the people and it will wither away he says it, it can wither away that people's revolution proletariat revolution will come and it will wither away Yes, this were the broader differences. The rest you manage yourself, or from the order of Weber, etc. You have, and yes, there are certain similarities also. Similarities in what both similarities, similarities with respect to origin. Weber also talks about all these aspects only how origin of bureaucracy, religion, protestant ethic, capitalism. This also similarly, uh, Karl Marx also talks about that. okay so this is basically this is basically what is karl marx okay so do study karl marx it's better to be safe than sorry it had it has come in the past so may come again also what you will do if it comes in that compulsory 10 marks even if we also discuss in the one of the video where the upsc how upsc sets a trap a b and c here simple simple and then this also simple but but those areas which are less covered but then you can mass maximize marks in pubad then people say in pubad you get less marks option is this this blah 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 every option is equal it depends on your level of preparation and every option you see especially upsc in the upsc in the recent years has more or less maintain all options at equal level Uh, there is no i think nowadays there is no advantage of any option yes before it was some options were getting excessive marks excessive 
in some options were getting excessively low marks. But now everything is at equal footing that what we can infer from whatever the marks and performance of people and to what extent you have covered public administration. To cover holistically, then you will maximize marks only. You see, last year paper also that discussed many papers, you go and check papers, this way the traps they are set. Okay. If you cover holistically, then you won't fall for any trap. You will maximize your marks. Okay, so as promised, so one question for you to practice. So the bureaucratic structures. Do not Okay, uh, sorry, I'll put 15 marks. See, this is the question for you to practice. The bureaucratic structures, bureaucratic structure do not automatically reflect the prevailing social power, but power and disfigure them. Critically discuss 15 marks, okay? So, write this question, uh, send it to me in the PDF format and I uh, will evaluate that. Please send in PDF format only. Last time many, in spite of telling, was sending in image format. Send please in PDF format because the software I'm using for evaluation does not support image. Okay, so send it on my number 88 So do mention your name also and send, you can WhatsApp or Telegram, whatever you wish. Okay, <clears throat> okay then I uh, hope this is helpful for you and uh, do study it holistically right again. Uh, okay, so we will continue with this series uh, with some more videos. Uh, hope this is helpful for you. Okay then, uh, happy learning.